Welcome to Get Sleepy, where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. My name's Thomas, and thank you for joining us here tonight. I want to quickly mention that this coming Friday is World Sleep Day, and to celebrate that, we'll be releasing an extra episode at the end of the week. It's a meditation that we've had numerous requests for recently, one that's a bit different from our usual, as it's tailored specifically towards helping you get back to sleep if you've woken during the night. But you can listen to it any time you want to drift off. So, in addition to our usual schedule this week, be sure to check back here Friday night if you'd like to hear that. As for this evening, we have a sleepy retelling of a fairy tale that has gone by many names, including Old Mother Frost. Thank you to Alicia for writing this version, and to Heather, who will be reading it to you tonight. It's the story of a very sweet girl named Hannah, who finds herself unexpectedly in a strange land. Still, She offers to help wherever is needed, and eventually she finds out how completing even the most mundane tasks can make the world a lot more magical. So allow yourself to ease into the comfort of your bed, feeling your body relaxing into the mattress and the softness of your pillow supporting your head. Take some deep, nourishing breaths in through the nose and gently back out. While you breathe deeply with awareness, you may sense some noise in the mind. So just imagine that your soft, supportive pillow is there to absorb all of those thoughts and feelings, any stress and any tension. Let your head and neck completely release and relax into the pillow, and your mind can follow suit, completely releasing and relaxing as your pillow takes all the weight, tension, and busyness, relieving you of anything disruptive. Close your eyes if you haven't already done so. In your imagination, picture lush farmland filled with charming gardens and stone cottages. Follow a winding road through this idyllic scene, and you will come upon one cozy little house that belongs to a hard-working and honest family. This is where our story begins. Long ago, a girl named Hannah lived in the countryside with her mother, father, and younger brothers and sisters. 
Her parents were very kind and humble people who worked the land and supported their family simply. All of the children helped around the house and did what chores they could do on the farm. But there were still tough times. Being the oldest, Hannah tried to take on as many responsibilities as she could. In addition to doing the washing, helping with the cooking, and minding the children, she often spent her free moments spinning wool into yarn. With so many people in the family to clothe, this was a very important job. In the winter, Hannah liked to spin next to the warmth of the old stone fireplace in the cottage, with her little white cat curled at her feet. Once the weather got warm, however, she preferred to get a change of scenery and some fresh air. Hannah had been known to take her spinning and sit under a tree or next to a nearby stream. With the sunshine and cheerful butterflies, and the sweetly chirping birds to keep her company. The girl could be found humming songs to herself and spinning for as long as she had the time. She never complained about the extra work and was always kind and patient with both her parents and her little siblings, even when she was tired. One fine summer day, Hannah had taken her spinning outdoors and was sitting on the flat, warm stones of the well near the cottage. The sky was filled with early summer sunshine and the bees hummed lazily in the flower garden. Hannah's sleepy cat was stretched in the grass by her feet. A short distance away, her youngest brother and sister were sitting in the doorway of the cottage, creating an elaborate arrangement out of the small stones they'd collected. Drifting out the window from inside, Hannah could hear the sound of her mother clinking pots in the kitchen, no doubt preparing the evening meal. Enjoying the beautiful weather, Hannah was deftly spinning and singing to herself to pass the hours. She was determined to get just a little bit more precious yarn made before it was time to tend to the livestock for the evening. Looking up from her work, she noticed Mr. Schmidt from the next farm over. He was walking past on the road with his dog and raised his hand in a friendly greeting. Smiling, Hannah dropped her spindle in her lap and raised her hand to wave in return. Unfortunately, just at that moment, she knocked the spindle to the left and it tumbled off her lap and down into the well. Hannah reached for the spindle as it fell, but she wasn't quick enough. Hoping in vain that it might have gotten lodged on a stone near the opening, 
She leaned in as far as she could, peering into the shadows. To her dismay, she still couldn't see it. Not wanting to admit the precious spindle was truly lost, she leaned just a bit more and she lost her balance and toppled headfirst into the mouth of the well. Falling down the shaft of the well was an odd sensation. She wasn't afraid, as you might have thought. Instead, she felt herself sailing lightly through space with no stones or earth anywhere near her. Time seemed to stand still. She was surrounded by darkness. But when she looked at her feet, it was as if she could see twinkling stars in the distance. They never grew closer, but they multiplied in number until she was soaring foot first into what appeared to be a dazzling starry sky. Hannah reached her arms downward as if to touch the glittering starlight. And then she was upside down and the stars were above her. There was a rushing sound in her ears, like a roaring of a river, and a cool current of air flowed over her. Down, down, down she went, feeling an overwhelming sleepiness behind her eyes. After that, she remembered nothing else. When she awoke, she was lying in a meadow full of wildflowers, staring up at a cloudless blue sky. Sitting up, she looked in every direction for a well but there was no sign of one, neither upon land nor above her head. It was if she'd simply materialized in a new place. Hannah tested out all her arms and legs and touched her head. She was fine and actually feeling wonderful, as if she'd had a long and peaceful sleep. Standing up, she examined her surroundings. The lush green field stretched out into the distance, and there was a wooded area surrounding it on all sides. In the middle of the meadow was a small house with smoke coming out of the chimney. There was no sign of any people or animals in the yard. It was very curious. One thing was certain. Hannah knew she couldn't stay standing in this field forever. The little house was the only possibility of help in sight. So she decided to go knock on the door. 
she set out walking towards it across the meadow, making her way through the tall grasses and delicate dancing butterflies. When she reached the house, she found the front door standing wide open. Not wanting to enter without permission, she looked cautiously around the exterior of the house. Nobody was there at all. She returned to the open doorway and called into the gloom. Hello? Is anybody here? There was no answer. As her eyes adjusted to the darkness, she saw that the hut had a large oven with a fire burning in it. There was also a table that had flowers scattered across it. In the corner, there were barrels that looked like they might hold supplies. It was as if someone used this house as a bakery. While Hannah was pondering what to do, she was surprised to hear what sounded like small, sing-song voices coming from the area near the oven. Thinking her mind was playing tricks on her, she moved a little closer and tilted an ear toward the noise. This time she heard, Hello, take us out of the oven. We are finished baking for the feast. Hannah stepped back in confusion. Surely she had bumped her head, she reasoned. How could bread be talking to her from the oven? Then she heard it again. Sweet little voices said, Hello, take us out of the oven. We are finished baking for the feast. Well, this was a predicament, Hannah thought. How could she walk into a stranger's house and begin meddling with their baked goods? Nonetheless, she supposed that the baker would appreciate help if their bread was in danger of burning. In the end, Hannah's sensible nature overcame her apprehension. She took the paddle standing next to the oven and opened the door. Sure enough, there was a row of lovely, perfectly baked loaves inside. She used the paddle to remove the loaves and left them on the table to cool. Then she closed the oven door and put the paddle back. Standing with her hands on her hips, she viewed the cooling loaves with satisfaction. She would have to move on, but she hoped that this baker would return and be pleased that someone had saved the bread from turning to cinders, especially if there was a feast happening. Now, a less responsible person might have helped themselves to a loaf of bread, considering it was small compensation for saving the entire batch. However, Hannah left the bread untouched and, somewhat reluctantly, left the cottage, which was now filled with a glorious smell of fresh baking. There was nobody here to help her, after all, 
and she felt she should be on her way. From the little house, it was not very far to the woods. Standing outside the front door again, Hannah could see there was a lightly worn trail that led into the trees. As if someone coming either to or fro went this way often. Following the path seemed like a sensible plan, so she headed in the direction of the trees. It was a lovely, welcoming wood. The forest was not very thick, and the sunlight reached down between gently rustling leaves to leave pools of sunlight here and there. Squirrels darted about in the treetops, and birds sang cheerfully. The path she was following continued to meander in a pleasing way, winding here and there, over small streams, and around lichen-covered tree trunks. Anna wondered where she was going, but her heart was still light. She found herself humming a tune and enjoying her walk. After a time, she found herself in a grove of apple trees. She was getting quite tired, so she sat down under one of the trees to rest for a few minutes. Leaning her head back against the tree trunk and closing her eyes, she was attuned to all the small sounds of the forest around her. She was very soothed by the twittering of the birds, the humming of the insects, and the sound of an occasional squirrel running through the treetops. It wasn't long before she was close to dozing off, but just in that moment when sleep was near, She could have sworn she heard quiet, whispering voices. Opening her eyes, she listened more closely. She tried to understand what the voices were saying. It sounded like, Hello, we are weighted down with fruit. Shake our branches so that the ripe apples may fall for the harvest. After her strange experience in the bakery, Hannah was more ready to accept another magical surprise in the course of this very odd day. Since she had nowhere to go in a hurry, she gladly obliged the voices of the orchard, diligently shaking each tree until all the apples had fallen. Hannah was not the type of person to leave a huge mess of apples lying everywhere, so she gathered them all up in her skirt and then stacked them gently in a nice pile at the bottom of each tree, being careful not to bruise a single one. Then, feeling her work and her time here in the orchard were done, she turned and followed the trail onward. Naturally, she did this without taking any apples. After all, the harvest was not hers to eat. 
Soon after leaving the apple grove behind, Hannah began to feel truly wary. She didn't know how long she'd been walking, but the light shining into the woods and her lengthening shadow told her the afternoon was growing later and that night would soon fall. This concerned her because she still had no idea where she was going or if she could find a place to sleep for the night. As she was worrying about her predicament, the trail she was following finally led her out of the woods. In front of her, a lazy river flowed through a large clearing. Behind it, in the distance, was a mountain. She caught her breath at this beautiful scene. Then she noticed that, down by the river, there was a tidy little cottage, edged by a white picket fence. It was surrounded by impressive-looking garden beds, and there were goats and sheep grazing nearby. On a long clothesline, a snowy white eiderdown was airing. A small curl of smoke rose slowly from the stone chimney, dissipating into the pink and golden evening sky. Gathering her courage, Hannah walked in the direction of this friendly-looking house. She hoped perhaps she could find something small to eat and maybe ask for a spot by the fireplace where she could sleep for the night. She reached the gate and carefully opened it, stepping through and latching the door behind her. Then... She followed a gray stone path between two garden beds and then to the arched front door of the cottage, which was painted a cheery red. Hesitating briefly, she knocked on the door. Hannah was a little caught off guard when a square peephole opened a bit below her eye level. She bent down slightly to look into the opening and saw a person peering back at her. Can I help you? A woman's voice said, somewhat suspiciously. Yes, well, my name is Hannah and I've gotten quite lost. And I was wondering... If you might have a little food to spare and a spot, any place where I could sleep for the night, Hannah responded hesitantly. The eye continued to look at her for what seemed an eternity, and then the peephole closed and the entire door opened. Standing in the doorway was a kindly-looking older lady. She wore simple, homespun clothing with a work apron over it, and her long white hair was neatly swept back in a very sensible bun. Squinting at Hannah, she reached in the pocket of her apron and donned a whimsical pair of wire spectacles. Then she smiled broadly. Well, my dear, the woman said, I don't get much company here. If you could help me with a few chores around the house, 
I would be much obliged and would be happy to share what little I have with you in return. Hannah sighed with relief. Oh, yes, she responded. I am very good with chores, and I would be ever so grateful for your hospitality. Well, then, the woman responded, you'd better come in. It's getting late, and you should eat and rest. You can help me with my work tomorrow. There's plenty to do. Then, realizing she had not introduced herself, she said, It is nice to meet you, Hannah. You may call me Mother Frost. The woman walked away from the door, motioning for Hannah to follow her. Hannah stepped inside the house, which was not much taller than the top of her head, and she closed the door behind her. The interior was just one large room. To her left was a table and two chairs, some kitchen supplies such as pots and pans were visible on a short counter nearby. Across the room, Hannah could see a bed, presumably the normal place for the eider down she'd seen on the clothesline outside. Next to the fire were two rocking chairs. A sewing kit sat between them. A steaming pot hung on a large stone fireplace, cooking a stew that seemed like the best thing Hannah had ever smelled. She realized she was hungry after her long walk. She didn't have to wait long to eat. Mother Frost sat her down by the fireplace and served her a hearty bowl of stew. They ate together in the flickering light as darkness fell outside. After dinner, Mother Frost asked Hannah if she would fetch the eider down off the clothesline. No need to shake it, she said. I already did that this morning. Hannah ventured into the darkness in the garden and brought the eider down back inside to place it on the bed. Then she helped Mother Frost wash up and tidy the kitchen. When they were finished, without asking any questions about where Hannah had come from or where she was going, the kind old lady took a blanket and pillow out of a wooden chest and made the tired girl a bed near the fire. Sleep now, Mother Frost said warmly. We will be busy in the morning. The little dancing flames of the fire were comforting and hypnotic. Hannah laid herself down on the makeshift bed gratefully. She could hear the occasional owl hooting outside or the bleeding of a goat. In seconds, however, she was deep in a dreamless sleep. Hannah awoke with the sun, realizing she had rested better than she could ever remember sleeping before. After a light breakfast, she was ready to take on the tasks Mother Frost assigned to her. Many of them were familiar chores 
she had done all her life. Living on a farm, she was quite used to caring for goats, sheep, and chickens, washing dishes, and cleaning the house. Mother Frost was delighted to have young hands to assist her with these many tasks. As she was clearly getting on in age and had been struggling to keep her house and garden of late. With Hannah's enthusiastic help, the entire cottage was neat as a pin in no time. There was one chore about which Mother Frost appeared extremely particular. Every day, she said to Hannah, you must take the eider down from my bed outside and shake it very vigorously. Shake it until small feathers fly from it and it is once again light and fluffy. This is very important. Can you do that? Hannah nodded seriously at these instructions and did not ask questions. She shook and shook the eider down and the small feathers flew into the air. Some blew away, drifting upward into the sky. Others fell nearby. Then she would put the snowy white eider down back on the clothesline to air until it was evening again. Hannah did not leave at the end of that first day. She had nowhere to go, and she was quite happy to stay a bit longer to help Mother Frost. Fortunately, the old lady was delighted to have company and a younger person to assist her with her homestead. One day led into another, and soon Hannah and Mother Frost were set in a happy and companionable routine. A few weeks after Hannah arrived, Mother Frost assigned her a new task. I have another important job for you. I want you to take my watering can, she said, motioning to a large can in the corner with a spout, and water my garden. Make sure you don't miss a spot. Shower the water all over so that the seeds will grow into a beautiful crop. Hannah took on this important job as requested. She filled the can many times, making sure a shower of drenching water reached every corner of the garden plot. She began doing this every day and, before long, a lovely garden appeared. In one area, gorgeous tulips, irises, and daffodils grew. In another, lettuces, green onions, cabbages, and radishes sprouted. Mother Frost had quite a green thumb, and Hannah only had to water the garden for it to thrive. With so much to do at Mother Frost's cottage, time flew by, and Hannah was happy. After many months had passed, however she became increasingly thoughtful and withdrawn. She no longer had much to say when they sat by the firelight in the evenings, 
and she often got distracted while mending and stared off into space. Mother Frost knew something was not quite right, and she finally asked Hannah what was amiss. Oh, Mother Frost, you are so kind to me, and I love helping you here. The truth is, however, that I have really begun to miss my family at home. I don't know how to find my way to them, but I am homesick, and I wish I could find a way back up the well where I dropped the spindle. Mother Frost listened to Hannah sympathetically. Then, reaching into the sewing kit by her chair, she produced the very spindle Hannah had been pursuing the day she had fallen down the well. Hannah was amazed. My spindle? How did you come by it? She said. Mother Frost's green eyes twinkled merrily. It fell in my garden, my dear, for I am the link between your world and this one. Nothing happens here without my knowing. Hannah leaned forward and took the spindle from her. But then you must know how I may find my way home. Can you help me? Mother Frost leaned back in her rocking chair and folded her hands in her lap, smiling and looking at Hannah over her spectacles. You are a good girl, Hannah, and I will miss you. But it is right that you should return to your family now. Get a peaceful night's sleep and I will send you on your way at first light. Hannah was so happy that she thought she would not be able to drift off that night. But she was wrong. Happily pocketing her long lost spindle, she laid herself down once more on the soft makeshift bed at the fireside. In the magical way of Mother Frost's cottage, the crackling flames and the hooting of the owls outside once again soothed her straight into a deep and restorative sleep. When the sun rose, Hannah folded up her bedding and placed it in the wooden chest. Then she took Mother Frost's eider down out to shake it one more time and hang it on the line. Thank you, my dear, the old woman said, emerging from the cottage with a basket. This is for you. Opening the lid of the basket, Hannah could see it was filled with beautiful ripe apples and warm, freshly baked bread. Mother Frost continued, While you have been here, you have helped me so much. You tended to the baking when the oven was hot and I was busy elsewhere. You harvested the apples when the trees were heavy with fruit and I was too busy. Then each day you shook the eider down until the feathers flew. Lastly, you watered the flowers and vegetables in my garden until they thrived. Hannah was humbled by Mother Frost's praise. Shaking her head, she said, But those were simple chores that anyone could have done. 
the old woman continued kindly. Those ordinary tasks were the making of the seasons. The baking of bread and tending of the oven yields the beautiful warm summer days. The shaking of the tree and collection of the fruit heralds the fall. Every time you make the feathers fly from my eider down, glorious snowflakes drift down somewhere in the world. And when you take care to thoroughly water my garden, You bring life back to start the entire cycle again. Then she motioned to the basket hanging over Hannah's arm. This basket will always be full. Your family will reap the rewards of your hard work, and you will be a credit to them all. You did not take any bread. You did not eat the apples. I am giving them to you now. Hannah was so moved by this gift, which she knew would keep her family fed and comfortable for many years to come. She hugged Mother Frost and thanked her gladly. Then, remembering she didn't know what to do next, She said, But where should I go to find my way back out of the well? Mother Frost turned and gestured at the river. You came through the water, and that's how you go back. If you follow the water upstream for a few hours, you will come to a large bridge. Cross the bridge. And when you set foot on the other side, you will have returned to your home. Hannah asked, Will I ever be able to return and see you again? Mother Frost clucked her tongue sympathetically. No, my child, your journey here was an accident that will not be repeated. However, I promise you this. When you feel the sun shining, when you watch the apples fall, when you see the snowflakes drift silently down on the world, when you hear the rain watering your spring garden, then you will know I am there with you. Hannah embraced Mother Frost one more time and laughed through the little gate in the white picket fence, looking back to wave as she traveled down to the river and began walking along it. Before long, Mother Frost's sweet little cottage had disappeared in the distance almost as if it had vanished into thin air. The girl walked along the river for what seemed like hours. It was a lovely waterway with foaming rapids here and there and sparkling waterfalls that fell over smooth stones. When the sun was high in the sky, she stopped under a shady tree and ate, tearing off a piece of bread from the loaves in her basket, and then tasting a crisp, juicy apple. They were delicious. Continuing on as the afternoon grew late, She finally saw a stone bridge in the distance, arching gracefully over the entire river. It looked as if it had been there for a very long time. Knowing she had found the right spot, 
Hannah made her way through the tall grasses at the water's edge and stepped hesitantly upon it, half expecting something strange to happen. Nothing did, though, as she proceeded onto the bridge and began to walk across it. When she got to the midpoint, she turned, put down her basket, and looked back in the direction from which she'd come. Mother Frost's house was much too far away to be seen, but the entire vista was breathtaking, with the river disappearing into the horizon, the woodland on the left, the mountain rising on the right. Looking down, she saw the deepest, quietest part of the deep river. Hannah took one last look at the cloudless blue sky overhead, picked up her basket again, and walked on to the end of the bridge. When Hannah reached the edge, she held her breath for a moment and waited. What if her foot landed on the other side and nothing happened? She was nervous that the magic wouldn't work. But she closed her eyes, tightened her hold on the basket, and stepped. There was a rushing sound in her ears, like the roaring of a river. And a cool current of air flowed over her, just as it had in the well. When she opened her eyes again, she was standing in her yard at home. Hannah was greeted joyfully by her family, for time had continued to pass while she was away, and many months had gone by in her absence. Everyone gathered around her happily, wanting to be the first to hug their beloved Hannah and hear her story. For her part, Hannah was very relieved to be home. She related the amazing tale of Mother Frost to a rapt audience of siblings at the fireside that evening. After that, the entire family had a hearty dinner compliments of her basket of bread and apples, which incredibly never emptied. Hannah took up her family chores once again, and she did them gladly, because she had seen for herself how honest work really made the world go round. From that evening forward, every time Hannah would hear the rain pattering on the roof or when she would sit at the window with her spindle, watching feathery snowflakes drift lazily to earth, she knew that old Mother Frost was busy and that her eider down was getting fluffed and aired daily just as it should.